Hello, I'm Curtis, and welcome back to Allen Family Farms. So, today, I'm up kind of early. It's a little dark outside. Uh, just a little cooler right now to do some work at 4 a.m. versus in the middle of the day when you're just drenched in sweat. Anyway, so what I'm going to be doing right now is working on the electrical panel. I have not, I have not done enough on this electrical panel just yet. Um, I don't even have power onto this electrical panel. Yes, that may cause me some issues in the future where I'm probably going to have to cut this open and get the wire running in and then repair it back up again. I understand that. Um, I just kind of had to start, I had to, I had to jump a few steps. So that's kind of where we're sitting. As I was running the wire, I would leave little notes on it. Um, on just a little piece of the insulation. So I know what everything is going to. A while back, uh, one of my previous videos, I talked about wiring up. Um, this will be the breaker for the generator plug that will be coming in. And this, it will be set up so um, it will be able, it, you're not going to be able to run, it's a lockout. So you're not going to be able to have power coming in and this power also on. So you don't recharge the line if it goes out and they're having to work on it or something like that. So given my electrical situation, I need to talk with the electric folks. There's some strange noises in the morning here. Um, I have, uh, I only have um, a 60 amp service right now. And of course that has to be upgraded. Um, that's coming in the future. But the way everything is run, it's run off, my well is run off the 60 amp and all that kind of stuff, which is not to here. So depending on the configuration, this is probably not going to be my primary panel. This may actually be a secondary panel. So what that means is this, um, this bonding screw right here, this, this bonding screw allows me to be able to put in my neutrals and my grounds on the same bus bar. But the fact that it's probably not going to be my primary panel, which this is, you can only do this on a primary panel. Since it's going to be a secondary panel, I'm going to have to um, run it over here to my, my negative bus bar. So I'm going to undo this bonding screw and remove this negative from here, run it over here um, onto my negative bus. And I'll just keep everything separated just in case um, this ends up being my secondary panel, for sure. Because that's the, that's the way I think it's going. So, let me get y'all set up and we're gonna get going. Here we go. First things first, safety. All right. I have to start this off by saying, one, my apologies for the shadows. I need some light, it's 4 a.m. Secondly, I'm not a professional. I'm not an electrician. I've done stuff like this before in the past, but one, don't kill me in the comments. Two, don't take what I say and do as the Bible, all right? I'm not a trained electrician. All right, this will be inspected when I'm done. So, here we go. First things first. You know, even though it is early, here in North Florida, well, it says 73 degrees, but the humidity is about 300%. So it's hot. This is all for my main line coming in. I'm just clearing up this spot here. <clears throat> of course, I have a pen because I need to write on the panel what things are, all right? I am gonna leave what I have written slid up the wire, so for whatever reason, I'll always have a, a, a double record here and on the, on the door of what it is. All right, <clears throat> getting my tools together. So, you know, I've been here for a few days this trip. For y'all that don't know, I don't live here in North Florida, 
spider webs. I live in Florida, a little further south. And uh, so I just come up, this is my farm. So, and I'm building up my office. So this, uh, I come up here on my time off and I, I do things slowly. But um, this trip I was able to have a couple extra days because I had my schedule free up. Um, the sounds out there are crazy. Anyway, <clears throat> so it's just been, you know, it's been hot, it's hot, no doubt. Um, and I, I don't know, I've just been really tired and I haven't, I think it's the heat, I don't know what it is, but uh, I, uh, I haven't gotten a whole bunch done. I mean, I've gotten a lot done, but I wanna get more done than I've gotten done for the amount of time I actually had up here. I have a to-do list that is very doable so today is the day I need to kick it into gear and get it done. One thing is I'm trying to still float out all this stuff on the, on the sheetrock in here, all the mud stuff, and I'm getting it slowly, but I, I think I just, I don't like sheetrock because, well, I'm not proficient at it. And um, I hope to never have to do this again. It's a, uh, for me, being a novice, it is, uh, it's a big job and Kudos to those that do it every day um, or that are proficient at it and good at it. Um, you know, I'll hang one or two big sheets and then I'm done. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's definitely a big job. I think it's looking okay. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but I'm going to give it my all and do the best I can. So that's going to make it take that much longer. So um, the remainder of the trip, which is today and tomorrow, I want to get this done. I want to float out some more of this uh, mud here and give it another day to dry. Um, the corner beads are really giving me a headache right now. It almost seems like the corner is a little bit more of a 90 degree than the bead, I don't know, whatever. Um, and then I wanna start on the on the bathroom. I, I got all the Duroc and stuff. I, I wanna put my curb up. And if I have time, put my first uh, dry pack layer down for my shower pan. And then of course the liner goes and then another layer on top of that. So uh, I want to do the cooler. I want to do the concrete pad for the uh, air conditioner, the mini split that's outside. Um, build some garden boxes because we're we're in the middle of uh, we're in the end of August now, and it's time to plant some late summer stuff. Um, man, a couple other little things. So anyway, let's get started on this. All right, let's go. So I'm taking out my ground. <clears throat> I'm sorry if y'all can't see everything. I am uh, trying to do this in a way where you can see most of it and then my big head is not in the way. So, yeah, that's what I was worried about. I hope I'm not wrong, let's hope it can move. Now, I would like to have the fan on, but it creates so much noise. Um, when I'm trying to record. I just don't really want to make all that noise right now. So anyway, this is my ground bar, or ground bus, whatever you want to call it. And it does look like I can move this down. Oof. Now, is that gonna, oh, it's still short. Okay, so I'm gonna put my ground bus on this side. I use names interchangeably, so my apologies to the professionals. shop on one side and then the, the house on the other side but my wire my wire is not long enough for that um, so then I always try to think of some kind of pattern or something I could do so then I was thinking well I put my I could put my higher voltage stuff up high and then go down lower uh, I don't know it's kind of we're gonna figure this out I'm a little picky of course about how I get it but I don't know. So 
Anyway, I'm sorry you can't see this side. Alright, so I'm using a power tool with this. I'm sure some of y'all are shrieking. I'm, I'll be careful. Um, because yeah, these are, you can easily strip these things out and then that really sucks. So you gotta be careful when you're doing that. All right. So it sounded like a breaker just popped, but I have no electricity to it. That's interesting. Okay. Anyway, so we're back. I've been kind of working on this here a little bit, um, making decent progress. Kind of don't like the way some of this looks, but I have almost all my circuits done. Um, so I'm just kind of going down and um, putting them in one by one. I have all my grounds run separately on this bus bar because this is probably gonna be my secondary panel, um, not a primary panel. If it was primary, I can tie them all in. I can run this screw in here and then I can put grounds and everything right here, um, but whatever. So anyway, um, I just have a few more circuits. Um, I am short a few breakers. I'll, I'll let you watch me do a couple more breakers here. Um, it looks like I have the fire, fire alarm circuit left. I have the front receptacle GFI. I have the air conditioner. Um, this is the washer. And then I have the living room. So some of these need to be arc fault. Some of them need to be ground fault. Some you can do a combo arc fault, ground fault which are these two here, which these are for my kitchen. I don't need arc fault, if I'm not mistaken. I don't need arc fault in my kitchen, but um, I have them here. You do need a ground fault, but you don't, uh, the arc fault is not needed from my reading. Um, it's not needed in the kitchen, but an arc fault is needed pretty much on every other 15 or 20 amp circuit. Um, that's normally ran in the, in the house. There's a lot of little caveats, I guess, under that, but mainly not in the bathroom and not in the kitchen is my understanding. So maybe that's an overkill. I understand sometimes they trip for other reasons and stuff, but this is not very big. I can walk from the kitchen to the panel. Hopefully it just doesn't cause too much headache. Anyway, let me get going. Um, with this here, I'll show you. Um, washer. So I have, this one here is gonna go on my other 30 amp circuit breaker that I have here. So this is a plug on neutral, but some of these I don't, I can't get plug on neutral. So you have a pigtail. So you just run the pigtail into the bus bar. Um, also on this side, if this is over here, um, just run it into the bus bar and then you put your neutral and through your hot wires and this is a 220 circuit. Um, and that's what this, water heater is going to. Um, so next, actually though, it's gonna be a little different because the water heater doesn't need, uh, it just needs the two hots in the ground. I don't run uh, neutral on the water heater. So anyway, um, so this is the washer 20 amp. So the washer 20 amp is gonna need, no, I'm looking at this one. So this is the arc fault. So some of these circuit breakers were actually pretty hard to find, so the, the ones that were GFI, the ground fault, um, like for the bathroom, I'm just running a regular circuit here and I'll run the little tiny regular receptacle with the, the test button on it at the site itself because, and I'm doing that in the garage as well, um, many different reasons. One, if I'm out in the garage and it trips, I can just walk over to it and push it instead of having to come back in here and do it. I might have muddy feet, et cetera, et cetera. If I'm in the bathroom taking a shower or whatever and it pops, I don't want to have to come all the way out here, even though it's not far, and have to reset it. I can just reset it in there. So that's some of it, um, some of my reasoning behind that. Um, so anyway, this is the living room circuit. And already I ran the ground to the, to the bus bar over there. And so because this is not an arc fault, um, excuse me, it's not a plug on neutral. The panel is a plug on neutral, but with a plug on neutral, panel you can use either the conventional or the plug-on neutral uh, breakers 
these arc fault ground faults happen to be a plug on neutral and that's why I have the neutral just going straight into it. So my neutral wire here, I'm going to just run this over. I kind of just tuck it in here and just find an empty spot somewhere. Since I have a lot of board on it, I'll just kind of come up here. Give it a little nip. Whoops. Make sure I like that. Of course I do. And then I hear bad about these little pliers, but I like them. So I also strip back a little bit bigger than I need. Not too much, just a little bit. And my theory on that is it provides me and the inspector with an understanding that it is secured in, like all the copper is where it belongs behind the screw, if you will. And what I mean is, um, if you still have some of the insulation on it and happen to accidentally put some of the insulation behind the screw, you don't really have a good connection um, with copper onto like in the screw here or whatever. So let me show you. So right here, right here you can see that the insulation goes further back, right? So you don't know if, is it getting copper or not, you know? So I like to leave it out just a little bit like that so I can see that, hey, there is there is copper on both sides, so I know that it is screwed in there well. Just like these here, just a little bit you can see. These are a little harder to see, but I guarantee you there's a little copper showing. So, and these suckers are in there. So, um, I've ch I double check, triple check, quadruple check. I give them a good little shake and make sure that, that they're in there secure. So, um, here. This is my torque. Set to my torque specifications for this box. Anyway, um, so, uh, so what I also like to do is I like, hold on, let me fix this. Because I like to have the covering on both wires if I can. So, and this is faded a lot, I don't know why. But let me just rewrite it. Okay, so that way, like I said before, if anything, I don't know what will ever come up, but that's why you plan for the unknown. Where were you? I think you were around here somewhere. Oh, you're higher. And then I just try to make it look neat as I can. I find it also helpful if you run all your grounds first and then run all your other wires. And then, whoa, that one's loose. And then, um, I triple checked that and it was tight. Uh oh, oh. So, let's fix that. There's that one. Wow, that's crazy. Huh. Just strip some more off. This is why I check them a lot. There. All right. So then I have this one. So this is holding a spot right there. tucked away. So now I have, I can see which circuit this is. I'm not sure if that's showing. Yeah, there you go. So I can see what circuit is here. Oh, of course, I'm going to have my, I have my panel labeled as well. I don't know. Ounce of prevention. So it looks like I'm going to have to go shopping for some more 
breakers, which I hate doing that. There's so many different breakers, breaker types out there. It's kind of annoying. Of course, if I was an electrician, I'd probably understand them more and probably have some. Vertical. Let me make sure I have those labeled there. Let me yes, I do. Now, so I'm not putting this one in just yet. This, I said, is my water heater. I'm not putting it in just yet because I still need access to these uh, neutral spots right there. So let's do this one. So this is gonna be a 20 amp. <clears throat> this will be a GFI, but it'll be out there. Uh, I'll just put it out at the, at the I'll put the plug in it, so receptacle. All right, so I like to find whichever one of these here. Let me just get this one up here, kind of high. I've been putting this thing off for a while. I don't dread this, but there's a few things I just get mental blocks against, like the sheetrock, and I uh, just have a hard time doing it. So it would be prettier if I were to just have put all my commons together, ran them all together first. I didn't know which ones were going to be on the plug-on neutral type breather. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't do this every day, obviously. So I don't know what the hoopla is about the plug-on neutral. It's supposed to be more convenient, easier. I'm not sure about the added cost of it with the panel itself and with the breakers. But, I mean, whatever. I'm still plugging these all in. To me, it's not too much of a difference. Maybe on a day-to-day -day basis it is. But, I mean, in the sense of this, how I'm having to wait to do this one so I have access to the common bar, the neutral bar, I mean, I guess it would be beneficial if I had a plug-on neutral uh, breaker, then I can just plug it straight into this and I don't have to worry about finding the bar when your breakers cover it up. But on this side, the breakers are not covering it up, so I would have easy access to it. So, <sighs> all right. So, 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 what's this one again? This is the front receptacle, okay. So then, I'm just gonna run it like that. So you just kind of do these one by one. And, uh, Mark them as you go. I have my paper over there, I've been marking them. Um, so you don't lose track. Even though you have the label, you still want to keep track of it. Okay. All right. Okay, so. Yeah, it looks like I do need a arc fault for my washing machine. So another breaker I'll get. Um, so anyway, I'm putting the, uh, this is the one for the water heater. This is my, uh, the heck, I think this is the, this is a ground fault. So this has the little pigtail on it that you gotta put in here. So all you do is you put that little pigtail in there into the common, bus bar, put it to the exact torque specs required by the manufacturer, and then, and then somehow snap this dang on thing in here. There we go. Bam. So anyway, this is for the, the, wash, the water heater. So these water heaters are a little bit different. 
They say, so I don't even think that matters that right there, that coil, but I put it on anyway, the pigtail. So you have your load and your load. So let me just get these to the size that I want them. And give them a cut and call it good. This one, actually, I'm kind of funny about that. I want the black one up here, because that's how the other ones are. Um, so what I need to do, what I will do right now here in just a second, is go get a piece of black tape. Since this is a 220 circuit, um, I need to put a piece of black tape here since I don't have a red wire on it. And that's going to tell whoever comes into this panel that, hey, this is a hot. I'm going to put one on the other side, too, where the water heater comes out, uh, where the wires come out for the water heater itself. And that's going to let whoever is working on it understand that this is a live circuit. It is not a common, as it appears to be. So you put a piece of black tape right around it, a little black band on it. That's just for safety. Oh man, there is a nice little breeze coming in right now. Of course, since I'm recording, I turn off the fan and it heats up a little bit. And I have found, don't take them screws out, man. Just loosen them up a little bit. They're a pain in the butt to get back in sometimes. So, load and load, not on the common. It would be easier if I put the, I'm gonna go find my black tape. Let me leave this out and put my black tape on it. So that's, that's pretty much it, that's it for now. I need to get some, a couple other uh, breakers and then we'll wrap all this up. Um, of course, I don't put the panel cover on until I'm done with all the sheetrock and texture and all that kind of stuff. So that's all this is gonna be for now. Um, that's really it. Um, yeah, I, I worked backwards and I might have to kick myself when I have to get the main power into this along with the ground, but I'm still working that out with the electric company folks with having two can meters and all this kind of stuff. So I'm working all that out. We're gonna get it figured out and you know, you gotta move on. You can't just stop and wait. So I suppose I can even cut from here and go up, but that'll be very hard to go. That wire is huge. All right. So. This is the next day. The panel, the electrical panel is pretty much wired, um, minus a few breakers that I'm short, really one, two. Um, it looks a little, it's a little messier than I wanted it to look, but um, I think it's gonna be functional at the moment. And I did wire it as a secondary panel, as I mentioned. I still need the main power coming in, so it's obviously not a live panel. I still have to ground it. So I know I'm going to have to cut into this up here to get my power running in. I don't think I can go through this legally because there's not a punch out, but I'll talk with the electrician about that part. Um, anyway, um, so I think I'm, I think I made a mistake, which can happen. This is my, this is my uh, wire for my uh, air conditioner. I have a mini split but it is a, a 220. So I don't know why I did this. Um, I don't know if it's because I tried wiring it like the water heater. I don't know what I did, but speaking about that, this is the um, black tape that I mentioned putting it on there since I'm using it as two hots. So on the water heater, you don't run the common, you just run two hots off of it and then ground it. I don't know if that's what I was thinking with the, um, with the air conditioner or not. I know at one point I was going with a 110 um, mini split and then I went with a 220. So I don't know, maybe I made a mistake. But then the whip that I have is only three wires as well. It almost looks like two hots and a ground with no common. So I need to do some research on that and figure it out. I, I looked it up a little bit yesterday and it appeared like I need to have 
three wires. Well, my ground plus two powers and the common. So we'll figure it out. Um, so today what I'm gonna work on is, well, that's, that's it. So the problem is if, if I have to, if I made a mistake, which I probably did, here's where my pad is gonna be for the, for the mini split. But um, if I made a mistake, like I think I did, I will need to run a 220 from here. I'll just have to kind of go under and around. But um, this, I mean, this is just sitting here right now. It's not, it's not permanently affixed yet. But worse comes to worse, I'll have an extra 110 right there if I need it. But if that's the case, I'm going to want to move my my pad over a little bit. I, I like the protection of the building there. I like it offset just a little bit there. So I'll probably move it that way just a little bit more, but then I run into the window. So I want it here because that's where the door lines up inside and my mini split, the, uh, the vent, if you will, is gonna be here, of course, inside and just blowing straight through the rest of the office. So I don't know. I have a little bit more thinking to do. I really wanted to get this pad um, put in at least. Um, so, you know, I guess my, the whip is six feet, but I guess I could make it any size I want. But, um, I mean, I, I suppose I can still get back here to a 110. It just wouldn't be very, um, it will be, eh, I think it'll be accessible still. It'd just be kind of be a pain in the butt. But anyway, I mean, I could move this here. I could move this there. I could probably move it over here more and then just let it run with my, because um, the power is on this side of the of the condenser unit or whatever unit this is called, heat pump or whatever. But um, so maybe I can move this over here, let it run like that. And then I just have to go down and then all the way under here, which is actually the easy part, all the way under here, which, this will all be in concrete sooner or later. All the way under here, under here. I put that in yesterday. Um, and then come up and then come into my panel. That's right there. So all that huffing and puffing is Millie looking for that mouse. It's funny. I don't know if y'all hear that or not. My other dilemma I was talking about with my electricity is that pole right there right there has my meter on it and it has a box so from there it runs to this pole right there which is my well from that I, I ran some wire to my RV and in the end when I have my larger circuitry coming through um, because this is all just 60 amp service when I get my what is it 220 amp service it's going to come from i'm assuming it's going to come from there and trench all the way under here and go over there and then hop up into the electrical box you will see through here it's going to have to curve up over this hump and then lay just against the side there and then come up and plug into the to the box <clears throat> so you know, the aesthetically displeasing thing about it would be I may have two, two runs of electricity here, one for the air conditioner and one main power coming in. Another thought is I can run the air conditioner to that, but that's, again, only 60 amp service. I'm running the well. I'm going to leave the RV on that. So I think I just need to have a main run coming in here and then... Um, kind of go from there. She's funny. You hear that? <laughs> um, <laughs> she lives her life to get this mouse that she'll never get. Um, so I don't know. Y'all have any ideas? I am wide open to uh, ideas on this. Thing. I obviously have a lot of electrical work to do. A few things I'm not 100% certain of, and so I'll do a little bit more research. You know, it's funny. 
you do research and research and then you think you get the answers and then when you actually come to applying the information you got, more answers arise. It's interesting. Anyway, so that's it with the electrical panel stuff. Um, I'm gonna kind of hop off that subject and uh, start on the next project for the day. Um, I've been running out of gas early. I guess it's because I'm up at one o'clock in the morning and uh, I just, I just get, I'm, I'm, I'm beat by 10 o'clock in the morning. So, but whatever. Um, again, who's rushing this? Um, so I'm gonna get started on some other stuff and uh, I appreciate y'all for watching again and we'll get back with you here very shortly. Thanks a lot, bye.